Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Railroad Tycoon 3. It's been a while since I've made one of these, but I've been playing Railroad Tycoon all day and just having a lot of fun with it, so I figured, why not record an episode? Um, for those of you who don't know, Railroad Tycoon is a simulation, it's a business simulation of building railroads sort of at the, at the start of the railroad industry. Um, and it's a very, very deep economic si simulation as well. It's almost as much of an economic sim as it is a, a sort of railroad sim. And I really enjoy it. Um, I actually like doing the uh, the American maps quite a bit, even though I'm not, I'm not American. Um, just because in the United States, the railroad was a big part of this sort of like pioneer expansion into the West. And I like that aspect of the game. Whereas it was sort of empire building. Whereas in Europe, there's sort of already an established empire, right? People already live everywhere. Um, but the railroad sort of starts to com connect everyone and to build uh, the sort of industry and things. And that's pretty good too. It's just a different vibe it's sort of in my head, even though the gameplay is pretty much identical. Um, and anyway, today we're going to be playing on the, on the island of Great Britain. Um, I'm going to read the, uh, the sort of quest description here, and then we'll get started. The Flying Scotsman, leaving from platform number 10, King's Cross, to Edinburgh, all aboard! Daily, daily departures at 10 a.m. since June 1862. It's worth noting we are currently in January 1840. During its reign, it was the peak of British engineering style and efficiency. At least, that's the way things turned out. However, there was nothing certain about this route when it was first made. Your job is to make a legend, legend, in the railway industry. The Queen has entrusted you to make this railway a reality. You must connect the industrial center of Scotland to the center of the British Empire's, no apostrophe, industrial might with a railway that will set a standard of operations that will be the envy of the rest of the world. So our primary goal, the one that we have to achieve not to lose the scenario, is we have to connect Edinburgh to London by the end of 1865. This should be easy enough, I think. As long as we are financially viable, we should be able to build enough track to get up there, no problem. The silver goal is to maintain a lifetime average locomotive speed of 12 miles per hour or faster. This is a challenge simply because uh, the north of Great Britain, aka Scotland, is rather hilly, you may have heard. Uh, so that's going to slow down our, our locomotives quite a bit. Um, so we're going to have to make sure to, to keep our track on sort of nice flat ground, not to overload our trains as much as possible, and just keep that. I don't think it'll be that hard, especially as we go forward, we're going to get some more and more advanced locomotives, and, um, and we should do okay. Now the gold, gold standard for this scenario is to be the only standing railway railway at the end of 1865. We will have opponents, they will build, they will expand. The AI doesn't, doesn't tend to do that well overall, but to be able to buy them out, which is what we're going to have to do, is not very easy. They're very expensive to buy out. We need huge amounts of money, and we need to like kind of wreck them as much as possible as well to try to keep them down so that they're as cheap as possible. So that is going to be an interesting challenge. We are going to start a new company. Um, we're going to invest. We have $100,000, even though it should be pounds, uh, to our names. So we're going to invest all of it into the railway. And that means, because you get matched at a sort of 10 to 1 uh, ratio of outside investments, so that way we get to max out our investments. So we're going to start with 1.1 million. We're going to call our railway the Highland. I guess that's fine, and we can choose our symbol if we want. Um, green for money? Might be hard. Everything is way too green. Purple, bluish, something that stands... Oh, I like this one. Green and gold. That's money, and it should stand out nicely from, uh, the, from the background, so we're going to purchase that. And the next thing we have to do is figure out where we want to start building. Uh, so London is here, and London is obviously quite big and fairly important city. And then way, way up here is Edinburgh, which is also fairly big. Um, and we ultimately have to connect the two, but it's going to take, like if I would just try to build a railroad from one to the other, it would take lots of money. It would take us, uh, there's London, uh, almost $3 million, depends on, you know, just being rough here, to get from one to the other. Yeah get the railroad actually showing up here a little over three million dollars ish plus you got to build stations and be profitable and we just don't have that kind of cash right now so we're not going to do that um, we have to we have to build a uh, a productive line first um, now in some scenarios all your railway has to be connected from one to the other in this one it is not um, we can uh, we could build uh, a line say from London to Guildford over here and then we could have another one uh, from Plymouth to Exeter whatever, you know, we could split them up. Obviously, at some point, you sort of want to join everything up because there are, um, 
there's a lot more you can do with sort of a big widespread uh, interconnected network. But early on, it's going to be about identifying very profitable, very small routes. Uh, one of the things um, most people, when they think of railway, it's to think of things like passenger travel, right? Because you and I, the way we would experience a railroad is by being a passenger on it. But the vast majority of most railway companies' uh, uh, income often comes from freight as opposed to passenger travel. So generally what we want to identify are industries that we can, we can sort of connect. Um, the other thing you want to do is the longer the route the better usually because if two cities are next to each other and let's find an example that would really show off the point here well this is interesting this is a uh, clothing um there we go i knew birmingham birmingham has a clothing factory i guess they make coats or something like that uh, no like burlington mm, bad pun okay anyway um birmingham has a clothing factory that's what this this pink up triangle is up means it's creating goods Sm down triangles, which are a little harder to see on this screen because they're on a yellow background, um, but they're green down triangles means they consume these goods. So all houses consume a tiny little bit of clothing per year, not very much. Um, and the textile mill takes cotton and wool and converts it into clothing, which is then consumed by something else. So if we go back to looking at the clothing, you can see that Northampton over here has houses, therefore it has a demand for clothing. And the goods, which are these little black carts, they're like they're railroad cars, but they're just little slivers of them, automatically travel over ground from one city to another. You can imagine that there are roads connecting one or the other, right? There, there are people loading clothes into trucks and driving them from one place to another. Um, and rivers are especially good at carrying goods um, because you can load them onto onto barges or something like that, so they can go a little further, a little faster. But Nothing beats the railroad, especially for long distances. So you don't want anything that's too close. Like going from Birmingham to Northampton, probably not a very big money maker. If we mouse over, we can see over here at the very bottom of the screen, the price of clothing right around here is 166 per carload. And right over here is 175 per carload. So you can make a profit going from one to the other. Although very quickly, the price of Northampton will drop. As the supply goes, or as the demand goes down, because we're supplying it fairly regularly, and at the same time, the price in Birmingham may go up a little bit. So, to make a lot of money, you tend to look for really big differences. Like way over here in this area, the price of, price of clothing is all the way up to about 200 per carload, uh, which is a much larger profit. Obviously, we need to build a lot more railroad tracks, and you can't make the trips as frequently. Um, but it's much more. Uh, much more profitable. Also, you don't have to compete with this sort of ground route. Now, this will, to a certain extent, sort of dry up once we get the railroad, but it's always a possibility that might compete. So that becomes a little bit more profitable, although I think the price of setting up the rail, I don't think it's going to be quite worth it. Now, there may be other industries there as well um, that could turn something. There's That's a house. Brewery. Okay, brewery. We've got two breweries in Birmingham, which needs grain. And it's actually got a grain farm just outside. Wow, and booze, everyone wants booze all the time. Where else do we have grain farms? Cambridge has both a grain farm and a brewery, which is pretty good combo. London has a brewery. And, uh, oh wait, I'm reading that wrong, actually. Never mind. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, there's a grain farm here and three over here. Interesting. Another brewery. No, no shortage of breweries. What else we got industry-wise? Do we have coal? We do have some coal. Be nice to find a nice clump and a nice supply. Those big, um, big down arrows are pretty good. What is profitable? Corn, just a slight demand. Oh, there's bigger. Yeah, bigger demand for corn. So, I, what is this? Dairy farm. Ah, uh, yes. You bring corn to a dairy farm. They consume, they don't turn corn into dairy because some things do, right? We were looking at that brewery. It turns grain into alcohol. Dairy just produces dairy, but if you bring corn, it supplies more dairy than before. So it'll produce some on its own, but it'll produce more if you supply it with corn. And lots of places want it. Hmm. I don't think the corn farm to London would be profitable enough. Now, Portsmouth to London, those are big cities. They might have a lot of passenger tra travel. 
Um, this wants pulp. We actually have no lumber mills whatsoever, so that paper mill is not going to accomplish anything, which is unfortunate. Uh, you have this port, tool and die factory. So you need coal, or no, you need uh, you need iron. Iron mine is only over here. Now there's two iron mines and quite a bit of demand. Maybe, maybe this is the area we want to kind of do things in. God, it's so hard to find a good place to start. And your start is so critical. So critical. Guildford's pretty close to London. What you got? You got a bakery. You need sugar and grain. You get sugar from a port. You get grain from... Wow. Over here. And up here. Grain from here to there. And it just uses up the bakery demand. It's not even a big city. What the hell are we gonna do? What's a good... Okay, Birmingham to London? We have to cross the river and everything? I think we just have to go from Portsmouth to London, even though there's not a clear and definite sort of trade, and just hope that it's financially viable enough. There's no demand at all for logs. Well, up here there is, but we're not gonna get there. There's some demand in London for logs. That's good. Not the port's gonna supply a lot of it. We're mostly going to be relying on passenger traffic, I think, which is not particularly great. Although, we could build a little bit of a web. We could connect Portsmouth to London and then hook up maybe a couple other little locations in London and actually just build our business based on passenger transit. I don't usually do that. I'm not sure how freaking viable it is. Could restart. It's randomized a little every time. We might get a different set of industries. What else we got? Wool from here to Bath, but those are just little spur lines, basically. Um, we might be able to take advantage of this Cambridge. To, what about that? Pulp wood, right? There was no production. Produce, lots of little supply, just basic demand. Wow. And passengers, yeah, there's no passengers yet because it doesn't travel. Paper, paper, yeah, there's production, but it's not actually going to work. Milk. Meat, male lumber, livestock. Leeds, Birmingham to the Leeds. I don't think I can financially pull it off. All right, let's just let's just cross our fingers and hope. This is kind of a little weird. Build up. Should be able to take off somewhere like this. Um, I guess we'll cut through Guilford. We may want to hook that up at some point. Some sort of local passenger service. I'm going to cut this way. And then go up... Yeah, this way-ish. Because at some point I'm going to want to cross the, the Thames. Build a big station over here. And try to grab as much as I can. Now, I don't have to. I could build the smallest little station here. Because goods travel on their own. They would eventually reach the station. But not as reliably. This, I think, would be better. London deserves something big. And then Portsmouth. Again, we could go with something smaller and save money, and the port should get to us. But I think I'm going to go ahead and build something big. It might actually be a bad idea to spend this much money early on, but I don't know. And we need a couple of service stations to give water and sand to our um, to our rail or our trains. It's very critical. Um, water, because they're steam engines, they need to top off with water. And sand helps you go up and down hills. Um, so I need that. And the maintenance station to top off their oil and just repair them so they don't break down quite as often. And we'll set up uh, well, trains. These uh, first trains are very small. Uh, they are ultra cool for passenger travel. Um, yeah. So we'll do that. Express, they do okay. Freight, they do less okay. Mixed. Um... And we'll just, uh, I think we'll do a pair, Portsmouth to London. And by default, we just got them picking up any cargo. They'll automatically pick up up to four cars of whatever cargo is the most um, profitable. And it'll never haul any cargo that's not profitable. Especially since you don't really, people are sort of paying you to carry the, the cargo from one place to another. You can't really force cargo to go anywhere. Um, which can be an issue if you, say, buy an industry. Because you can. You can buy an industry. You can build your own industry. They're very expensive, but they can make a lot of profit, especially if you're supplying them with goods. Uh, so this will do fine. So I'll buy that. I'll go from Portsmouth to London. And I actually, I don't usually do this, but I will add a second train that goes from London to Portsmouth. They're a little slow, a little small, so I think there's going to be enough demand 
for both of them and let's take a look at what they're going to do. So, uh, the Portsmouth to London is taking mail and some clothing, which is good. The London to Portsmouth is, oh no wait, it's the other way around. This is in Portsmouth loading up, let's go a little faster, loading up sugar, lumber, logs, and sugar. And the one leaving London, going to Portsmouth, is mail and clothing. So that'll be kind of profitable, they'll do that. We may put a little stop in Guildford. What is this? Oh, there's that bakery, which may have a demand for stuff. Longer routes just tend to be more profitable. Bigger routes tend to be more profitable. So hopefully those will turn a uh, profit for us. And then what do we connect next? Just this one little corn farm, maybe. Brighton? It's not very big. Bath, perhaps. It's got some industries, which is good. It's got this fruit orchard pretty close by, which is good. Um, there's some basic demand. We could, yeah, bath to Portsmouth. It's probably what we want to do next, and we'll need some serious, we'll need some money to fund that. Um, hopefully these routes, the first trip tends to be the most profitable because there's the biggest sort of difference in demand in the cities, and then after you start doing some shipping back and forth, they don't tend to do quite as well. Still doing okay. Um, actually, I don't, ah, the Firefly, yes, much more expensive, but much faster. Um, New Zealand is a British colony, weapon prices drop 10%, that doesn't really affect me too much. Um, I'm actually, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to make sure, just in case one train gets stuck behind the other, I'm going to make sure they always carry at least one thing. Um, that way you won't have an empty train always following behind a full train, um, which could conceivably happen. I don't usually build these redundant trains. There we go, they're turning a profit. We actually have some money. Oh! Competition. However, that's not bad, actually, because... Uh, here, because they're actually going to bring some good from Exeter to Bath, and I want to be the person who brings it over to London, effectively. Uh, if I start from here... See how much money I sort of kind of need. About 300k to get this connected. But I don't have to build a, uh, a uh, terminal over here. Now, they will take some amount of my profit. But the profit they take is mostly based on how much of their track I use, not their station per se. So this is actually pretty profitable. Um, it's almost easier to connect it up to London, but I think there's more demand for their goods in Portsmouth. So we're going to do something like this-ish and that-ish. Yeah, so we just need a few more train stops. If we had better credit, we could sell off some more of our stock. Let's issue a little bit of stock. Not going to make us a ton of money. But it's a quick way to raise a little bit of money. Like so. Nicely connected. Good. And now we can build another train. We'll go for, uh, I guess we'll have to go with another one of the cheap ones. Uh, maybe we can deliver one more. One more. Load. Hopefully we'll turn a profit. Long way. They just started their trip. But if we can get up to 70k, I don't know if they're going to be profitable enough, actually. And just barely. End of the year. Arg! No. Alright, shit. I should have just built the cheap one. Let's do that. You're going to go from here to here. Same sort of thing as before. Purchase that. Going from Bath with clothing, passengers, clothing, and grain. Interestingly, it didn't pick up any of the produce, although it could be because Bath didn't have the produce. It's, it is eating the produce in Bath, so. Um, but some of it will come here, it's higher price, but now it should start to redirect over to Bath, and then we'll bring things over to Portsmouth. We could actually pay to upgrade the station to a larger one, even though we didn't build it. I guess it helps. Oh! Now they've taken out a lot of debt, but they're connecting. Who the hell is building that part? And I'm wondering if I shouldn't buy some stock early on in both myself. I can buy stock in the other companies as well. We'll get we'll get to the stock market manipulation soon. Waiting for more cargo. Yeah. Hmm. I shouldn't have done the double train actually. Actually, I should have redirected one of my trains to go to Bath to Portsmouth. That would have made a lot more sense, I think. Maybe. Okay. Speed things up. Let's go. Okay, prosperity is good, so we'll start to get more and more higher prices. There's just more and more demand for things. It's good, and Portsmouth to Bath. And this will connecting this will make this route a little bit more profitable, because now we're effectively bringing goods from London to Bath, although not directly. It still has to be profitable to go from London to Portsmouth, and then from Portsmouth to Bath. Actually, Athley, 
That's what we're going to do. We're going to take this train. We're going to change... Pause. We're going to take away your Portsmouth stop. And we will have one train that goes directly from London to Bath. There you go. So that should optimize some of the profits. It's a little bit of an awkward route. We could cut the corner a little over here just to shorten things, but I'm not going to worry about that now. And I'm, I am going to avoid taking out any bonds, especially with less than perfect, because right now we'd be paying 10% interest. And even though it, it, the bonds is always a hard decision to make because you are... You're getting some money earlier, which means you can expand earlier and just grow earlier, but you're also killing, you know, some of your profit in the long run, and you can easily screw yourself. What do we have over here? Oh, the brewery, right. I think we might connect Canterbury. Not sure. There we go. Ooh, nice profit here. This is the London to Bath. Boom times ahead. Excellent. We're just going to sit in, sit here, watch the money roll in. I'm going to start buying stock in the other companies um, with the hope that they'll turn a profit. Um, but also it'll help with a hostile takeover later on. Um, Birmingham is sort of connected to Bath. I could run a train from Bath to Birmingham, even though it's all on their track, but they'd take almost all the profit. Actually, they'd probably lose money for a trip, so I don't want to do that. I'm thinking London to Birmingham is probably a nice, a nice trip next. But we will need some money, especially since there's going to be a bridge to cross here. I'll, I mean, I could cut here, build a parallel track, um, but it's kind of awkward. It's a lot of money. Just across the river. That is the bulk of things. What is this? A sheep farm. They also want corn. There's actually going to be a lot of demand for corn over here. I could build a big station and get all that. I don't think so. I'm going to let them sort of move organically around. It'll be fine enough. In Northampton, we have a tool and dye factory, which takes iron and turns it into goods. Iron is over here. Very interesting. So, and now we can go through Northampton. Yeah, it starts to get still a little too expensive. I guess we'll actually be cutting it a little to the south here so that we can come in right in the front. Something like that. <clears throat> Famine! Crop failures across Europe plunge Europe into chaos. Food prices soar up to 50% as demand skyrockets. Well, that's unfortunate. How am I doing? Increased my salary. Nice. So my salary goes and gives... So, in case you don't know, there's your company, and then there's you. And what you are doing, you invested money in your corp company. I own roughly 10% of stock in my own company. But I can also invest in other companies. I get paid, and I can turn that money around into buying other things. Take a look at our goods here. Playing two years. These are all my status. Right now, my average speed is good, and that should only get better until I hit the Highlands. Might be a problem. So I'm going to spend some money on these guys as often as possible. I do need to buy them out at some point. If the uh, stock market crashes, then I'm going to have a problem, because I'm currently buying on margin, which means I literally... I am borrowing money to buy stock, and I'm, the, I'm borrowing money based on the collateral of the stock I own. Right, so I'm saying, listen, I, like, for example, I own a million dollars in stock, so you can you can lend me a hundred k. I mean, that's fine. I've got, you know, if if you know, I can pay it back by selling some stock, and then I've paid back my loan, right? No problem. But if the stock market crashes, and then all of a sudden the value of my own stock goes into the toilet, I can find myself in a situation where I owe more money than I own. In which case, there's a margin call, which means they they force me to sell my stock, and as I dump my stock in the stock market, the value of my stock goes lower and lower and lower. So it's this horrible cycle you can't get out of. It's a miserable thing. You never want to let it happen. Um, so the famine in Europe has made shipping of food items quite profitable. It has been suggested that lowering your price on shipping food items could lower public support of your railway. I actually don't ship very much food as is. Um, I haven't actually made stops. Like if I had made some stations that were based on shipping grain, I would not want to do this. But since I haven't, I could do this and increase maybe the money I make on passengers and things like that. Let's see what happens. I think I'm... Corn. I am. Corn and sugar. Actually, I'm being stupid. And this train is currently in a place where it has no water. Ah, oh, there's not an actual... Oh, I didn't build any... Uh... That was dumb. I'm going to build one right here for you. Another one over here. 
and there should actually be a maintenance factory, which I can't quite afford, maintenance stop right here to get as many trains as possible. Which I should have built the water thing here too, but there we go. But I already had one here, so I thought, well, sort of equal distance. So yeah, I made 151k just selling some stuff in Bath, and I so I, I paid 1k to this company to use their track, which is not very much. Wow, I mean, half a million. And there's not actually much reason to build these little little bits like I'm doing here. I was mostly just doing it so I could eyeball what was going on, because I think I have to pay maintenance on those, and they're currently not turning a profit. But my trains are doing pretty well. I could speed up their travel time by upgrading them to that latest train. Uh, it would cost some money, but it would get my goods around more frequently. Right now, they don't really have full loads. Hunger causes mass emigration, railway swamp, passenger traffic up 75%. Okay, I have a good reputation, and we're getting lots of passenger traffic. I should potentially be building some hotels everywhere. Profit off passenger traffic nearby stations. Do especially well in hubs where passengers switch from one train to another. Multiple hotels will cannibalize each other's sales, but there should be no hotels here. I should have that. Post office. Doubles the length of mail will wait. Restaurant. Do the same no matter what stage they're at. Tavern. Do well where they board trains. Right. Okay. So the thing, the difference would be if I had something where I had a straight line. Let's say I went from Exeter to Bath to Portsmouth to London in one train. So people could board in Exeter thinking they're going to London right but they have stops along the way so the hotel wouldn't do well in say bath because it's best where people get on and off a train the same with a tavern but a restaurant would make profit at every stop in this particular situation though i don't have trains that go to london to portsmouth to bath i have bath to portsmouth portsmouth to london and london to bath so they're all sort of on and off stops um in fact i almost shouldn't have passenger travel to london to bath if i really want to optimize some of these things but 100k it's probably worthwhile Definitely in London, it's quite big. It's going to delay my, my trip over here, though. I think I'll wait. And you know what? I think I'm going to connect first, and then I'm going to increase the am amenities because there's going to be that much more passenger traffic traveling my roads, my rails. And then I might want to consider making an express direct from Portsmouth to Birmingham, for example. Give me money. Oh, I need a little more, I think. It was about a half a million. I might have enough now. There we go. Um, although I can't build the trains yet. I need the water stations first. Otherwise, they're not going to really be productive. One here. And one here-ish, probably. Go faster. That was not a very profitable train. Oh, someone's using my track. Look at this. Oh, my rail, my stock is split two for one. We'll talk about that in a sec. Ah, stop spamming me with crap. I got a bonus and a pay raise. They're very happy when it's split. Check this guy out. This is not my train. They're going from, wait. No, it's not my train. They're going from Portsmouth to Birmingham. It's kind of strange that I can, yeah, I can see it. And it's going to do it entirely on my track. Virtually all the money from this trip is going to go to me because they're using the, my rail. So even though it's not my train, I'm okay with this. Kind of funny. Now, of course, I could build my own train that goes from Portsmouth to Birmingham. But I almost don't want to compete with this guy. Let him use my track as much as he wants. I don't mind. So he might still turn a profit, but not that much of a profit. Um, I still need to finish my little water factory, my little water stations, don't I? Yes, I do. Come on, trains. Finish your work. Suspended dividends. We don't have enough money. We'll talk about dividends later. More stocky stuff. Oh, here we go. Build that. And now we just need a little bit more for a train. I'm going to save up to 70k. I'll get the nice train. Look at this guy. Oop, there we are. So we get a firefly. London to Birmingham, and the Bur Firefly actually can keep a pretty good pace. I'm going to go up to six cars for this. Buy that. What's he going to carry? He's going. He's in London right now picking up passengers, corn, and a whole lot of milk. Very nice from the, my dairy farms nearby, I guess. And he's going to bring it up to Birmingham. Excellent. And unlike the AI, I won't have to pay much on the track. Hey, 
Did we have two ports here before? I don't think so. I think this is a new one. Very nice. Sheep farm here. Very, very nice. And then we're going to continue to expand northwards. We might piggyback on his rail a little bit here to go off.